hello beautiful people and welcome or welcome back to my channel if you are new hi my name is kira welcome so most of us are going to be starting our final exams very soon and i thought what better time to share some of the study tips i guess you can call it that i have learned which actually have nothing to do with physically making notes or reading notes or taking practice tests However, if you are interested in my actual study tips, how I make my notes and how I do active revision and recall and things like that, there will be a card linked on one of the sides to give you all of the tips you could possibly need. So the first thing is to eat superfoods. I know this tip sounds like some sort of health freak is telling you what to eat and what not to eat, but I eat seven almonds almost every single day. My mom has drilled it in me from a very young age how good almonds are for brain power and energy. Other things like berries, especially blueberries, green leafy vegetables, green vegetables in general such as avocado or kale, bananas and of course water are all extreme superfoods or super drinks that you have to have in your life in order to increase your concentration, make sure you're getting enough oxygenation to your brain, make sure you have enough energy to stay concentrated, as well as have less brain fog, which will increase your concentration and memorization overall. This is due to all of these foods either having certain vitamins or minerals, such as magnesium, iron, vitamin A, K, and B. And another added benefit of these besides, you know, just increasing your concentration and memorization is that most of the superfoods that i've mentioned actually help regulate your blood flow which usually means that adrenaline will be decreased in your body making you feel less anxious and hyper the second thing i sound like a mother saying this but is to eat breakfast the day that you have your exam I personally am not someone that likes to eat food very early in the morning. I tend to get a stomach ache or feel nauseous if I eat very early. However, with especially my matric exams, our exams would start at 9 o'clock and most of the time it would be between 2 and a half to 3 hours. This means that I would have finished most of my exams by midday. If I hadn't eaten anything from the night before, let's say I finished eating at, I don't know, seven o'clock because I try to eat three hours before I go to bed because I get terrible heartburn, which I think I've mentioned before. But if I had stopped eating at seven the night before and only eaten after 12 o'clock or at one o'clock, let's say in case, you know, there was a laser on a paper or with traffic until I eventually got home, I would be starving by the time that I would come home. And obviously, no one wants to be that person that has a loud stomach growl in the huge examination hall, which happened quite a lot to my friends who did not eat breakfast the day before. But another thing is that you obviously don't want any distractions to happen while you are writing your exam. If you are hungry and you're a foodie like myself, only thing that you will be thinking about constantly is having food or that your stomach pains or what are you going to eat when you get home and things like that rather than concentrating and taking in the information that is in your exam or trying to recall the information to answer your questions. So definitely have breakfast the morning off. It does not have to be anything fancy and it doesn't have to be too big, just something to keep up your sustenance. The third tip is to always trust yourself. I know this sounds so much more easier said than done, but trust me, I had a very big anxious problem when it came to taking tests all through high school until matric when obviously it's inevitable that I had to write no matter what. There was no such thing as an exam cancellation. You would have to write during the test time or at the end. So obviously writing a test was inevitable. And so one of the best things that I think I could have done for myself is to trust myself that I've done enough work that I could possibly have done without making myself reach a point of breaking. And rather trusting that, you know, somehow some way the question will help trigger whatever information there is and this is a tip that i give quite a lot to my friends as well as that everyone feels like they need to memorize everything from start to bottom nothing is going to help you you know recall it and stuff but the question itself is always going to help you recall the exact section you need to remember in order to answer the question. So for instance, if I had to learn the whole of the French Revolution, 
I would be so scared that I had to memorize the whole of the French Revolution rather than remembering that a certain question is going to be asked, you know, like what date did it start or how did the whole revolution begin or how did it end or what did the Treaty of Versailles entail? Those little keywords, Treaty of Versailles, whatever, is immediately going to trigger your brain to find the exact information that you need in order to write it down or to remember in order to you know put things together and answer the question so try and remember to trust yourself both in preparation as well as in the ability of your brain to bring out the information that is needed when it is triggered by reading the question or a certain word that is in your paper i've said it so many times and if you guys have watched my uni day in my life you guys would have seen that I take very, very frequent breaks, not only when I'm studying, but also just in general throughout my university day. Now, for me personally, the Pomodoro method does not work. If it does for you, then that's great. But for me, it definitely does not work. So I section out my workday into two to three hour slots just because I can get hyper-focused in that amount of time and then take a longer break, which will help me, you know, if I want to read or eat a meal or watch a series or, I don't know, a YouTube video or something like that. But I just tend to find that for me personally, longer periods of time with focused studying, you know, not being distracted and then having a longer break helps me with my productivity. Now, it's up to you how long you want your study or your productivity periods to be, but frequent breaks are so important. In that time, take your dog for a walk to get oxygenation to your brain, go fuel yourself with one of the superfoods that I told you about, but frequent breaks are so important, not just so you know you can have a break to stop looking at the stuff. Your concentration is sort of refilled. Like if you think of it, if you drink the same glass of water for like six, seven hours, chances are it's going to run out. The same thing happens with your concentration. That's why towards the end of a five to six hour study period, you can feel sluggish and as if you're reading the same sentence over and over again with nothing being absorbed. So that's why frequent breaks are very, very important. Is to not overdo studying the day before. I cannot tell you how many times I've heard people, even now in university, that like study up until three in the morning and then wake up at five to revise. It is the worst thing that you can do because one, it heightens your anxiety. It makes you question if you've done enough the day before. So what I tend to do is that I like to trick my brain into thinking that I'm actually writing a test one day before. Obviously, sometimes this doesn't work if I'm like off schedule or something, but most of the time I'll train my brain or work as if my test is being taken a day before. That way I feel like I'm fully prepared two days before I'm doing the test. You know, my lecture notes are done, my revision is done. I understand almost every single concept. That way, the day before a test, it's more so just brushing up if I don't feel like I've memorized something to the best of my ability or do like active recall if I feel like doing a small test or something just to see how I'm doing. I like to then make sure that I am done with all of my studying, reading through revision at least two or three hours before I go to bed. This I just spend, you know, with my friends, my family, eating, doing whatever I can to actually fully rest and let go and calm myself down. And this helps me have a better sleep. Usually if I study right before I go to bed, my sleep will be very interrupted and I will not feel very energetic or concentrated for my exam. And so this ties in again with, you know, just trusting that you've done enough work and that something is going to trigger whatever the information you need. But again, this only works if you have been working for like some time. You cannot expect to like only study the day before and then still have three hours of break before you go to bed. That's not how it works. That's why I always stress that every single day doing a little bit of studying and a little bit of memorization always works so that the day before your test you are not overly stressed. And this tip ties in very well with my final one which is that sleep is the most important tip or the most important thing that you can do for yourself. I know it seems very stupid like you know if you're sleeping more that means you're not studying more which means like you're not memorizing things enough so how does that actually help? So I actually watched a very interesting video, which I'm actually going to link down below. And I 
couldn't believe how well this has actually worked because I was doing this unintentionally. So I've never been a person to sleep less than I guess six or seven hours the day before a test because I just don't function that well. Sometimes under pressurized situations I might do well but in general I'm not a person that can do her best in a test while I'm feeling very sluggish and tired. And basically this video shared how everyone needs to have seven to nine hours of sleep. So basically your sleep is divided into a deep sleep, a light sleep and a REM sleep. And each of that cycles through 90 minute intervals, I guess you can call it. In the first two hours that you sleep is where you get the most deep sleep. That is where all of the new information that you have learned in the day is like sorted out by your brain into the respective place that needs to go, whether it's like the social part of your brain or, you know, I don't know, the logistical side of your brain. Then from hour three until like hour five or six, I would say, is where you have more lighter sleep than deep or REM sleep. And that is where your brain sifts through all of the information it's collected in that section, not only from that day that you learned the information but over a longer term period and kind of sees what you don't really need anymore or what you don't really find useful in your life anymore and it moves that to one side this helps make space for information to be put there the next day during the deep sleep and then finally the last two hours cleans out all of that extra information and like basically throws it away thus if you do not have enough sleep your brain won't be able to take in new information the next day. That's why if you study late or you study right before going to bed, your deep sleep won't be as deep in the beginning stages of your sleep, meaning that you won't be able to absorb all the new information that you've done. So sleep is really important. I really hope that that kind of makes sense. If that didn't make sense, then please go and watch the video that's in the description below. But basically, you need to know that you need to sleep seven to nine hours every single day to make sure that you take out whatever information you don't need to make the new information stick in your brain long term. So I really hope that these study tips actually help you and that you remember to just trust yourself, get enough sleep and still take care of yourself because Honestly, your grades do not define you. All of these tips that I mentioned, yes, it's good for focus and things like that, but it's also really good to keep yourself sane and healthy during your exam period where I know so many of us stress. It's a natural human reaction that happens when you're in an exam period. But I think it's very important for you to learn that without your body and your brain being able to function well, it's very likely that you will not be able to perform well in your test. So those are my top six tips. To go over them again, it's to eat superfoods, eat breakfast the day you have a test, trust yourself, have frequent breaks. The fifth one is to make sure you stop studying at least two to three hours before you go to sleep. And the last one is to have at least seven to nine hours of sleep. I hope that you find these very helpful and that it actually increases your marks and your stamina throughout your exam period come back at the end of your exam period and even when you get your grades and let me know of the progress that you've made now taking these tips into consideration i hope that you guys have a wonderful week filled with lots of love happiness light positivity and that your exam period is filled with less stress and the most success lots of love bye